Hello everyone and welcome back to another transfer update with me, David Lynch. Still plenty going on in this transfer window for Liverpool and a lot to resolve this summer going forward. So let's get straight into it. We'll start with the outgoings. Now obviously Fabinho is still closing in on that £40 million move to Al Itihad. I know there's been questions on social media in terms of why is this taking so long or why is the move not finalised yet. But I believe it's just final details being sorted out in terms of the negotiations. There were some reports from Saudi Arabia yesterday that Fabinho was undergoing a medical now that would sort of align with what we're hearing this side in terms of there are no hitches no problems it's expected that that deal probably will go through but it's just final details to sort at the moment and Fabinho is in the process of doing that but we do expect him to make that 40 million pound move to Al Itihad now in terms of the other outgoing that has obviously dominated the headlines recently it's the captain Jordan Henderson and what's happening with his future Al Etifak really interested in bringing him to, to, to join Steven Gerrard there in Saudi Arabia um, as I understand it at the moment there's been no real concrete progress with that one. We know and have previously revealed on this channel that Al Etifak are keen to, if they could possibly, get away with paying no fee for Jordan Henderson. Now, that's not a goer really as far as Liverpool are concerned. They do want a fee. Um, we'll have to see what that will end up being in terms of the negotiation. But I understand that there are some sort of element of talks going on at the moment. It's not completely dead in the water, but we just don't know how this one's going to resolve itself yet. There has to be some form of compromise found, or it looks like the captain will be sticking around. He has obviously indicated that he's willing to go, um, but we haven't had that breakthrough yet. So that one really is up in the air at the moment and no certainty, not like the Fabinho situation. Perhaps, and I'm hearing this from the Aleti fact side, maybe it'll be a situation where Jordan Henderson has to sort of sacrifice some of his salary maybe to, to, to put together that fee that would allow him to make the move to Saudi Arabia. But we don't know how that one's going to play out just yet. We'll have to keep an eye on it going forward. Now, obviously... If you're losing two players as influential as Henderson and Fabinho, or potentially losing uh, at least two of them, uh, we know certainly that one is likely to go. But if, you, if you're losing players of that ilk, then you really do need to get to work on replacements. And that's where Liverpool are up to at the moment. Um, they obviously have, have got to get in some bodies in central midfield. They'd already done some work on that part of the squad, but if you're losing players, you need to do even more. Uh, and we know that they're considering options to replace Fabinho directly in that number six position. Now, we spoke about previously on this channel about the options that were offered in that position by Liverpool in terms of potential targets. That's Calvin Phillips at Manchester City, Ryan Gravenberch at Bayern Munich and Sofian Amrabat at Fiorentina. Now, there's not been any progress on any of those as, as far as we know at the moment. Moment. Um, obviously, I, I've suggested previously. I believe you know there's every chance that they are three of, of very many names that, that Liverpool have got on the list. I've no doubt about that. Um, I, I spoke to a source this week who suggested to me as well that you know it's, it's not a great market out there for, for teams who are looking for a holding midfielder at the moment. There aren't that great deal of, of young talents who are so obviously ready to, to kick on to the next level. Who would you know, for example, be a, 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 a sort of a facsimile of of what Fabinho was when he came in. From Monaco, obviously, he was in that really good age where he was just about to hit his peak, but he'd proven himself in a, in a top five European league and was ready to take that next step at Anfield. Now, Liverpool are scouring the market and, and, and you don't get the impression that there's a, a really obvious Fabinho out there right now. Um, so the, the shopping in potentially a, a really difficult market. Um, just to give you a sort of update on what I know in some of, in terms of some of the names that have been thrown out there. Um, I know Coop Miners, who's at Atalanta, has been suggested. He's not a pure six, obviously. I, I believe he's played in a slightly different midfield role, but he's been suggested as a player who Liverpool have liked in the past and maybe could revisit now they need to bolster the midfield further. Now, it's my understanding that there hasn't been any contact on the player side just yet, which suggests to me that he's you know, possibly not high up the list as far as Liverpool are concerned at the moment. I think they would be doing that groundwork now if he was a player that Liverpool felt that they wanted to get in when if they were to lose Fabinho and Henderson and that isn't happening at the moment so maybe one to potentially cross off the list although things do change quickly in terms of you know if they get a rejection from elsewhere maybe they come back to that one but it's not one that they're looking at currently at the moment and the other name that, that's sort of dominating the headlines really is is Florentino Luis at Benfica now I can tell you this much. I know he's a player who Liverpool have liked and scouted for an awful long time. Um, they, they've watched him very closely and they like a lot about him. Uh, maybe he is actually the closest he, he could find to sort of a, a Fabinho type when he joined Liverpool uh, out there in European football at the moment. But it's my understanding at the moment that is not a move that Liverpool are pursuing. As much as they like the player, they appear to be at the moment uh, looking elsewhere. Now, 
I know in social media, I've, I've written that previously for This Is Anfield. I know in social media that, uh, you know, some elements that been cast out on that um, and sort of comparing it to where uh, the, the signing of Dominic Sobersly was, was played down prior to him arriving. But it, um, just to give you a bit of background, really, it's, uh, you know, journalists get information in different ways. And, um, you know, sometimes you can be thrown that smoke screen or, 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 or interest can be played down when ultimately the club is actually looking into something. But I would say around the Florentino Luis information is that it wasn't necessarily given in that way. I don't get the impression uh, certainly from where I've sourced that information that that is a, a case of, of Liverpool trying to hide anything or putting up a smoke screen um, again you know I would always caveat with that, that things can change very quickly in the transfer market um, and it, it's, it's very difficult to, to keep your information right all the time because things really do move very very fast and, and, and change quickly so you can be made to look a fool but I, I don't get the impression on the Florentino Luis one that that is one that Liverpool are really going to push for this summer um, so you know we, we've got to consider that there are going to be other names out there uh, another one we're hearing at the moment obviously is uh, Crystal Palace Czech Decore um, I believe he was a player that Liverpool liked before he moved to the Premier League uh, would it make them like him even more now that he has got that Premier League experience under his belt obviously just the one season but I believe it's a season where he was player of the year at Crystal Palace amid some really stiff competition when you consider the amount of talent that they've got there in terms of Easy and Elise. They've got some really, really good players. Mark Gay is another one as well, actually. Fantastic player. And so the fact that he stood out in a team that's got that much quality suggests to me that you know he, he, he maybe he is someone who's who's still on Liverpool's radar and they're really looking at and they do like to sign those players even if it's just the one season with a bit of Premier League experience so that they can judge the statistics and the numbers behind them and, and see if they can translate to the Premier League. So I'd, I'd say with that one, maybe that's one to, to sort of keep an eye on. He, he does certainly fit the bill. And obviously the, the, the other big target that's been out there and the one we know that Liverpool definitely like is, is Romeo Lavia at Southampton. Now, again, not one where there's been any progress this week. We know there's been talks on the player side in terms of Liverpool finding out what it would take to do the deal and, and, and wanting to know what the player's salary demands are. There's been no real progress. But I think there's a bit of hesitance there at the moment and I think that is around the fact that, you know, can you ask a 19-year-old to come in and, and as good as a 19-year-old as he is to come in and replace Fabinho and, and take up that role from day one? Um, you know, the ideal situation for Liverpool is that they were going to sign Lavia and have Fabinho there and, and rotate the two and, and blood him slowly and, and really sort of build him into the team. Um, whereas that option now is gone, you know, Fabinho leaving means that they're going to have to find someone who's a little bit more experienced there. It could be, of course, that they still sign, you know, Czech Decore, who's that that good age, just on the, the, the brink of his peak, someone in that sort of age bracket, and also Lavia and sort of slowly bring him through. That is one to keep an eye on in terms of whether they would like to do that. Um, but yeah, a lot is up in the air at the moment. And we do know that Liverpool are out there contacting a lot of players, agents, uh, laying the groundwork for, for a lot of potential moves because they know that they've got to be fleet-footed in this market. There are going to be rivals out there for targets that they like, um, and and you maybe not going to get the top one of your list or whatever. But they know they have to move uh, in in that way, and they have to get someone in. They, they they can't leave it in a situation where it's either our first choice or nobody, because they've done that in the past, and it is it's really bitten them. And also, this is a situation where you're losing what was a guaranteed starter. I'd say in Fabinho, I know he struggled last season, but I think Liverpool looking at this as well, he probably well almost certainly in fact would have started the first game of the season. So you need someone who's ready to come in and do that now. So that's 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 how Liverpool are at the moment, how they're looking at the market. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we'll see some movement in the next couple of weeks or so, so that Liverpool can get someone in, get them into training, get them ready for that first game of the season, if possible. Now, just to, to finish up, I'm going to come away from the midfield situation, even though that is the fascinating part of this this Liverpool re rebuild this summer, and just talk about the defence. Now, the, the, in terms of defensive targets, being really, really quiet, um, obviously, it's, it, I, I know from my understanding that Inacio at Sporting is not one that Liverpool are looking to sign this summer, so that is one we can rule out. Uh, it's the same for Mickey van der Ven at Wolfsburg. He was linked as a target previously, but I don't expect Liverpool to, to rival Tottenham for his signature. They really seem to be in the driving seat for that one, and he has been discounted as a target uh, to me by sources, so don't expect that one. So that only left Levi Colwell at Chelsea now. Obviously, Liverpool always knew that that was going to be a really, really difficult deal to do in terms of he had two years left on his Chelsea contracts at the moment. Chelsea don't want to sell him. They know how good of a player he is. They've got Pochettino in there now who, who is aware of how good a player Colwell is. 
But, you know, there was still always that maybe that chance that if he turned down the new contract offer, which is what is, is expected this summer, that maybe, maybe he would force through a move to Liverpool. But I would say that that now is looking extremely unlikely as things stand. Wesley Fofana has just suffered an ACL injury, which obviously has, has decimated Liverpool, uh, Chelsea, sorry, Chelsea's options in, in central defence um, and, and probably gives a little bit more of a path actually into the team for Colwell as a, as a, to, to start the season in their centre-half. So... And, and, and Chelsea are going to go, have to go into the market for another centre back. They probably don't want to be losing Colwell at this stage, this stage of the uh, the pre season preparations. So I'd say that really is a bit of a blow to Liverpool's hopes of landing Colwell. We'll have to see if alternatives come up because I still think that defence is an area that Liverpool need to strengthen. But that is one to keep an eye on going forward. Maybe we'll we'll now start to see some alternative names pop up because. As I say, I think Colwell is looking very, very unlikely at this moment. I think that pretty much wraps it up in terms of where we're up to in the transfer market at the moment with Liverpool. Uh, I'm sure I'll be back with you soon because these things are, are moving really fast. A lot of fast developments going on here and hopefully we'll see some some movement in terms of incomings start to come in as Fabinho seals that move to Al Etihad and maybe we get some sort of clarity over Jordan Henderson's future. Uh, future. Now, obviously, if you want to stay up to date with all that, please do click like and subscribe. Uh, amazing support for the channel so far. Let's keep it going. Um, yeah, and thanks to everyone who's watched and uh, I'm sure I'll see you soon.